Hello and welcome to the second API and microservices project and this is just the request header microservice and to get started with this just go to the repository by clicking the link go to code here and just copy the git link and then glitch click new project and import from github and just paste it into here and it will start generating now this is probably the easiest project on free code camp and it, this is very very simple all it has is an api with one root and it's slash api slash who am i and if you press enter what it does is it returns your IP address, your language, and your user agent. And all of these can just be retrieved from the request object. So it's very simple to do. And it should only take you up to like 10, 15 minutes to do this. So just wait for this project here to generate. And it, it, it does take a while to import, which is why I started it before. And um, here we go. It's it's finished now. So once it's finished, you should have a package.json here and you should have um, your server.js. And I'm just gonna rename this quickly just um, for ease. So I'm gonna put request header and then just my username like this. And what you can do now is just click share and then live app and then copy the link here. And you can paste this link to start submitting your app for marking. And right now it should fail all the tests but we have a working app ready to go now. And if you go to just here, this will be the home page of your app. So now we're ready to get started. So our API will work from this URL right here. So it'll just be slash API slash who am I like this. And right now, if we enter this in, it says cannot get. So that means we need to set up a route for this. And um, we have Express installed already in um, package.json. And we also have this Express app created right here in the boilerplate code. So we can just start using this app. And the first thing we want to do is set up a get root. So we're going to call app.get here. And the path here is slash API slash who am I like this. So it'll be slash API slash who am I. No parameters or anything needed here. This is very simple. And here you give a middleware function with a request and a response like usual. And what we're going to be doing is, if we look at the example in here, um, it returns an object right here. So I'm just gonna create a JSON object here or a JavaScript object that we can return. So I'm just gonna call this response object. And I'm gonna set this to an empty object for now. And then what I'm just gonna do here is call the JSON method on the on the response so that we can deliver a JSON back. And I'm just gonna give it this, this um, response object for now. So if we save this now and I refresh this, we can see that we have an empty object that has been returned to us. So now we have a working route to return JSON. So now that we have a root setup, we can start looking at fulfilling these tests. And the first one says the IP address should be returned inside the IP address key. So if we just look at the express docs and uh, we'll go into the um, request page once it loads up. And if we look at this requested.ip field, what it says is it contains the IP address of the request. So we can use this IP field to extract the IP address. So here we want to set the IP address field. So we can say response object. Remember that we are returning this response object right here. And we can set the IP address field like this. Um, I think that's the right spelling for address. And we can just extract this from the requests IP field. So this will just be equal to requested.ip. Now if I save this and refresh this, we can see that we have this IP address here. And this is kind of a weird address. It's not really the proper IP address. It's not what you expect to see when you look for your IP address. And this, that's because um, this packet before we reach the server, once it went from our machine, it bounced around a lot. And this is like just the most recent location. Um, if you want to show, if you want to route this or trace this back to the origin IP, which is the user's machine, um, we can enable a property on the app. And to set the property, we can just say app.enable like this. And the property we want to set is trust proxy like this. 
And what this does is it traces it back to the user's machine and shows that IP address instead. So if I refresh it, if I refresh it now, we can see that the full IP address is available here. So that's essentially like an IP lookup we've created. But regardless, we've filled the IP address key. You didn't even have to do the trust proxy. It would have worked without it. And now if I click I've completed, uh, we can see that we've got the first test passing. So the next, next test says that the language key of the response object should be set to your preferred language. And if you want some help with this, if you just go to the home page of your app, it shows the readme. And what it says is that, um, if I zoom out a little bit here, um, it says that the it can be retrieved from the header of the request and it's in this field called accept dash language. Now, if we look at the express docs and um, I think it's in the request methods, we have this method in request called dot get. And what it does is if you give it the name of a header field, it returns the content inside that field. So we can use it to extract the information from the um, accept dash language field. So let's do that. So what we want to do is in um, after we've set the IP address, we want to set on the response object the language field like this. And here uh, we can call the get method on the request. And the header field that we want to extract the information from where our language is stored is called accept dash language. So it'll be accept dash language like this. So if we tr refresh it now uh, and wait for it to start up again, yeah, we can see that the language field now has been filled in and we have our preferred language in here. So if you click, if you submit that again, we can see that the test two is now passing. So now we're on to the final test now. And what it says is that the software information needs to be put into the software key of the response object. And the software information is stored in, um, I'll just go to the homepage to show you, but it's, just, it's stored in a user agent header field. Yeah, it says right here from the header user agent. So we can do a very similar thing that we did here. And we can say, let's set the re response objects um, software field like they said. And we want to set, we, we can call the get method on the request again here. And the header field that we want to extract information from now, this time, is, call, is called um, user agent. So it says user dash agent like this. So if I save this now and I refresh this and again, wait for it to start up again, I feel like a lot of people are using glitch. Um, you can see the software field right now has been filled in with our user agent information. So that's test three now completed. So that's basically the entire app now. So we have an app where we can bounce back a user's IP address, their language, and their user agent. So that's basically it really. Um, it's really that simple. And if we just submit that now, we can see that we've completed the project.